Welcome to the channel, Veterans Apparel. The name's Frankie, um, Navy active duty corpsman right now. I'm gonna be interviewing Travis, who's also an active duty corpsman. Before I get uh, into the interview, just tell us a little bit about yourself, Travis. Yeah, Frankie. Um, so again, as he said, I'm a corpsman as well. Uh, I've been a corpsman for eight years. Uh, I enlisted out of Everett, Washington, so the northern part of Washington. From there, we went to corps school, then immediately to field med. Then I got stationed at my first command, being in Camp Pendleton, at the Naval Hospital. Worked there in family practice for two years, kind of got to, to learn the skills and, and put some hands on some patients. But from there is where we went to, uh, where I think I really learned medicine and um, in 1st Battalion, 3rd Marines. Uh, did two deployments with them, made some great people, uh, Marines and corpsmen alike. Um, from there, now I've uh, transferred to here in San Diego at, at one of the branch clinics. So we're, we're just progressing along. I'll be going to school again in December and just Again, just always trying to progress that, that medical knowledge. For sure. Tell us a little bit about the school you're going to, um, just whatever you feel like sharing about that. Yeah, so in December I'll be going to uh, IDC school, so an independent duty corpsman. Um, the, the idea behind an independent duty corpsman is that they're, um, I guess the best thing I can relate it to the civilian side is, is either a nurse practitioner or a, uh, or a PA, where I'm going to see patients, um, I'm going to be the one diagnosing, uh, in the sense of the word, like independent, uh, I will be operating by myself and, and providing the medical care needed to, to take care of uh, Marines and sailors alike. Nice, that's awesome. Um, so you've obviously had some experience as a corpsman and, you know, specifically as a greenside corpsman. What piece of advice, you know, would you give to a greenside corpsman who wants to just better themselves as a greenside corpsman or better their rapport with their Marines? Yeah. Um, so I think the biggest thing, uh, biggest piece of advice I can give to anyone out there going to be a greenside corpsman that's already a greenside corpsman is um, is using your subject matter experts. So you're given, um, you have a unique skill set being a corpsman. I mean, you're going to be the, uh, the medical expert when you're with the Marines, um, but you're you're not the combat expert. You're not the the tactical expert. And, and for some guys, it's their first command, so they're not even an expert in the military yet. Like they're still figuring out and getting into their own stride. So, um, ask questions, trust those that that have been in the situation and and uh, have been there. So, like for me, um, I really leaned on my my senior line corpsman the first time I was I was going through. Um, I leaned on like my my first classes and my leadership to to make sure that they were guiding me right. But when you're actually out in the field with the Marines, you have to rely on your Marines. So you have that, that camaraderie that, that builds up. And, um, and they told me, like, hey, Doc, you're going to be the, the third one in the stack, or you're going to be the, the second to last in the stack, wherever it was. Like, um, trust them and, and, and go with what they say. Um, too many times people try to come over, and they think that because they're going to be with the Marines, they're going to have to have like a, like a, a harder personality or, or to stand out or, or be strong uh, like differently than, than what their personality allows them to be. And it's, it's really just a matter of, of letting yourself be who you are, letting the Marines accept you for who they are, and then um, letting or integrating from part of the team in that sense. Sure, sounds good. Um, so what are some unique things that, you know, interest you in the veteran community? Um, so some unique things I think that interest me in the veteran community is, is uh, probably how extensive it, it really does reach. Um, so I mean, you always hear about like, um, like veteran organizations or veteran communities that that are you know, uniquely veteran or, or you know, patriotic in name, and they, they really draw that community. But uh, it really does go so much further than than that. Like it, the veteran community is everywhere. Um, I sometimes stream video games, or I like watching streams. Um, I like other people that are are playing games and like interacting with their their community that they're developing online. And um, one of the uh, one of my favorite streams to watch is a guy named uh, Old Gen, New Gen Gaming. And that's, uh, he streams from Mixer, which is like Xbox's premier streaming system. Um, but his stream is so, um, is so centered around taking care of everyone a part of it that a lot of veterans have gravitated towards it. So like you're in the stream, um, they're playing a game, it's a game that you like, and you're interacting, you're, you're talking with him on the stream, telling him like, hey, I think you, you missed something in the game, or this might be the right way to kind of complete that, that puzzle that's in the game. And uh, the whole time you're, you're just you know, interacting with him, the people in the stream, like 
Um, and then as you're talking, you see like a, a name across, across the screen. The guy's name is you know, 0311 Marine, retired, or you know some sort of, of military name. And you reach out and like, hey, you know who are you with? I was with the Marines. He's like, oh, I was a, you know, I was an infantryman with the, you know, back in in '92. I'm like, dang, that guy's been as old as I am. Like he was <laughs> in the Marines when I was, you know, just uh, just getting into the world. But um, but it's it's a cool thing to have, like just be able to to reach out and, and connect with people that are, are not in your, you know, not necessarily within arms reach or not in your community that are, you know, anywhere in the world, really. Um, and then the community that's developed online uh, extends beyond what is, is just online. So, like, Old Gen specifically has a, uh, like, a, it's called Discord. It's a, it's a communication app that's a- outside of the gaming itself. But, um, like, on that he has you know, a, a mental health section or, you know, a reach out section, you know, like if anyone's struggling or, or is in crisis that they can, you know, put up a message and it, people are quick to respond and reach out and be like, hey, I'm here for you. You know, you might be going through a rough time. I've been through rough times or, um, you know, like you may have had, you know, something happen in your in your life that, that needs some sort of, uh, you know, TLC and then like someone's there to, to help you through it. And that's, it's really amazing that he's been able to develop something like that. Um, and that's that's just cool like like just beyond the the community that like, the veteran community is is everywhere and like people who aren't even veterans are you know fostering that that veteran community hmm. so it's really it's really cool to, to think um yeah. yeah we're taking over watch out <laughs> Be everywhere. Um, so you know on the side for fun you make paddles that's um true. as going away gifts um talk about you know what a paddle is, you know, what it means, and, you know, what's your inspiration for um, making paddles as yeah, going away so gifts? I've got some right here, actually. So, one of my, this is one of the ones that I got when I, um, when I left uh, Camp Pendleton. Um, the cool thing about it, like, I didn't have any knowledge behind it or really what they were for, so I, I took the time and I, one, I wanted to learn how to do it, so I, that's where I first started to, to learn how to make paddles, and I, I, can, I can mimic exactly what's on here now. Um, but the cool thing about it is that they, um, that it's it is a na- it's rooted in native tradition. So like a paddle originated in like the recon, the seals, and like like the secret squirrel organizations. Uh-huh. Call them. But uh, like so a paddle is is a, a piece of equipment that propels the boat forward, right? And every person in that team has one. So as you leave your unit, they would give you your paddle and decorate it. But they would give you your paddle to identify that. Like, nobody else is going to use this paddle, and, and no one else is going to have the same impact or be able to fill your seat because you're taking your paddle with you. It's your unique a- asset to that team. So that's, that's the significance of paddles. And so it's, it's kind, of, kind of gone beyond the, um, just the, uh, the secret squirrel organizations and now is a, is a Navy tradition. Um, but I, just, I think it's important that, that as somebody leaves a command that they're receiving something that really lets them know that... Uh, that they were one appreciated, but that the time was taken from from the command to to produce that for them. It's it's one thing to get a plaque or you know something that's that's store bought that says thank you, but it's another that you know somebody took the time to to wrap it and and to to know them enough to put their their rank or ribbons or something clever about them them on it and that allows like it really speaks to to who they were as a person. So and it's. It's always interesting because you always get like um like on the bottom that you get like the name when they were there you know thank you for your service and the pleasantries but then i always get my little one-liner in there that that <laughs> is unique to them so like yeah. um we had one gentleman that um that was very a very eloquent speaker and, and would you know, so like hey i'm just gonna take a minute of your time or this will only take a minute we would say it all the time until like and then, like an hour later you'd still be there talking with him and uh so on the bottom of his paddle like hey this will just take a minute <laughs> so everyone said everyone that like will read this paddle to the group everyone's laughing because they know that like he said that a lot so that's pretty cool that's super neat super personable um speaking of paddles if anybody's in the san diego area and happens to be in the military or you just want to order as a paddle of going as going away gift for somebody you know that is in the military what can they reach out to you to order a paddle yeah, so for the san diego area guys for sure um you can reach me at uh, paddles by doc so paddles underscore by underscore doc on instagram um all my paddle stuff is there um but yeah I'm, uh, it's gonna be a little difficult but if i can't do it i'll definitely find somebody that can because uh, it, again, in the veteran community, like, like I, I'm connected with people that are that make them in Pendleton. I'm connected with people that are making them in Washington. Like, 
Like if it's not me, I can find someone to make you one. So sweet, that's awesome. Um, so this question, it can go anywhere. You know, we were talking about it earlier. We didn't really know how to approach it. Um, I think it's it's an interesting. It's it could be a comedic question, but if you were the president for the day, if you were the president of the United States for the day, for one day, you know what? I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna cut that part. Up. So. This question can go in any direction, um, but if you were the president of the United States of America, just for one day, is there anything that you would change specifically in the military, or what, what do you think? So this is a, an interesting question, because it, it is one that, um, that you're supposed to have a board answer for. So whenever you're going up for like a you know, Sailor of the Quarter or Blue Jack of the Quarter board, they always prepare you like, hey, if you were somebody for a day, make sure you have an answer for this one. And I always, I always dislike that question because they always want you to have something political. So it's like, oh, well, you know, you know, like, if, well, if I was the president, then I would want to talk to the, to the military. I'm like, eh. you know, that's the very, very like answer. Um, mm-hmm. But when it really comes down to it, if I had the ability to change something or be the president for the day, um, I'd want to create a, a division or task force or something that allowed for a, uh, for like a trade school as part of the military. So you look at the corpsman rate, you look at 0311 Marines, so infantry Marines, you look at a lot of these jobs in the military that, um, you know, thank you for your service, but when you get out, you don't have any kind of civilian equivalency. Mm-hmm. You don't have anything prepared for you on the outside. Um, I think that if that was addressed in that, like, if jobs in the military were, were focused around making sure that you also had some sort of you know, back end job or something that you could then relate directly into, you know, like, again, if a corpsman got out of the military and was able to be an EMT, if a corpsman got out of the military and, you know, had a civilian qualification that was part of schooling, they didn't have to, you know, challenge the LVN board or didn't have to apply for an MA or um, certificate, like, um, I think we wouldn't not only see less, um, less issues with, like, the homeless community, but I think we would see a more successful community because, um, we'd have people who have a leadership background or people who know how to work as part of a team that are getting out with, you know, with jobs that are and able to go into jobs that are going to be able to immediately affect the, the community. Definitely. So I think, I think that would probably be the thing I would want to see most change is that um, we develop something that allows for veterans to get jobs. Sweet. That's a really good one. Um, so what's your favorite you know, veteran, nonprofit, and uh, and why? So, we've got two right now, and of course, as you can see, we're we're both wearing Operation Warrior Crew shirts. <laughs> we're both affiliated, and, and I love those guys. But right now, the one that really speaks to me is probably uh, One More Wave. Um, one More Wave is a is an organization, not for profit, that is developing custom surfboards for um, disabled veterans. So whether it be super cool amputees whether it be um i saw a guy surfing blind on their instagram um (laughs) they're they're giving veterans disabled veterans um and and veterans um a means to get back into the world like something that had been taken away from them and they didn't think they were going to be able to do again um they're giving them that freedom back and that's it's incredible like it, it really is that is super cool um, where, what, do you know their Instagram? Yeah, so it's, um, I believe it is the number one, M, like the letter M, and then wave. So one more wave. Nice, that's awesome. All right, so thanks for watching. Um, for the first three viewers that subscribe, like, and comment below, I will send you a free shirt. Also, leave any feedback, you know, what do you like, what questions you know should be asked next time um what didn't you like you know i just want to improve this is our first one um just give us some feedback and yeah thanks for watching